The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there. And while the whole crowd stood on the beach, he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on the rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they did not have depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on the rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while, and when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lures of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on the good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. So many of you know that we had a, a recent disaster in our house where a pipe burst in our bathroom upstairs and it flooded our kitchen and we, the ceiling came down and we had to have insurance come in and reclamation teams and all that kind of stuff. And then they gave us some contractors to work with. And um, by the way, if you're a contractor, you're not going to like this sermon, so I apologize already. Uh, they gave us somebody to work with and they came in and said, okay, it should take us about three weeks. And it took eight. And, uh, and so we had to stay in a hotel for like four weeks. And uh, when we finally got back, they still weren't done. And, and I got to tell you, I was really upset with this, with this team of people, especially with the, the person that was the head of the job. And I was, I was getting really frustrated with him because he would said he would be there at a certain time and he wouldn't show up. They were going to do one thing and they would do another. They painted one room the wrong color. Uh, there, was, there was paint on top of my uh, dishwasher. And I just didn't understand how this could happen. And, and I I tried talking with them, and, and I just found myself getting really worked up about all the things they were doing, how it just kept happening over and over and over again, and I was getting really angry with them until finally the job is done, and the guy calls me up and says, um, I'd like to meet with you to, to finalize the project and sign the checks, and I was like, you bet, let's do this, and so I was planning on giving it to him, finally going to tell him exactly what I thought about him, his company, and the job that they did, and so I was at Lowe's returning some doorknobs that I had purchased online because they didn't have what I wanted, and I'm waiting in line at Lowe's, and I'm holding this box of doorknobs, and, um, and I'm working through my head how I'm going to tell them, and I'm almost like writing a sermon. I'm like, okay, here's going to be point one, because you did A, B, and C, and here's point two, because you did this, that, and the other, and point three, ooh, you're just, and I just, I'm going to give it to him, and he deserves it, because they've done all these things that are wrong, and I know it, I have it on paper, proof that you didn't do what you said you were going to do, and you didn't show up, and you were going to show up, and I'm so frustrated with you, and I'm just going to let him have it, and I feel justified by it, and I'm filled with righteous indignation, and I feel great. And I'm standing in line at Lowe's, and I'm miserably angry, and I'm gripping this box of doorknobs, crinkling the cardboard around it, and they call next, and I take a step forward, and there's a woman in front of me that goes up to the counter, and she explodes on these two teenage girls working behind the counter of the return center at Lowe's, and she's complaining that they didn't call her when her stuff was ready, and when she showed up, it's not where they said it was going to be, and she had to take off work. Do you know how far I had to drive down here? And she is just letting them have it, and I'm like, she's throwing things off the counter, and she's pushing things away, and I look up, and there's a camera right there, and I'm like, we're going to be on Dateline. This is crazy, <laughs> and I'm looking at her going, man, she is acting a fool, and I'm like, oh, that's me. Oh, my goodness. I couldn't believe. It was like a mirror. I was watching what I was about to do to this guy. She eventually stormed out saying, I'm never going to shop here again. And she leaves. And I, they call next. And I walk up and I set my doorknobs down on the table. And I said, 
I bought the wrong ones online, and I'm not going to yell at you. <laughs> and we talk for a minute, and one of the girls says, well, what were you looking for? And she's wiping away tears. And I was like, and I told her what I was after, and she goes, well, they're right over there. And she pointed at them, and I went and got exactly what I needed. I didn't even have to order the doorknobs. I bring this up because last week, Pastor Heather preached a sermon about the voices that we hear and how we wrestle with those things. And the whole sermon, I was like, oh, how I was caught up in that. Absolutely just so caught up in that. And then I read today's gospel lesson uh, about the sower of the seed, the parable that Jesus shares. It's on page 794 of your pew Bibles. And I want you to pull it out because it's really interesting. Um, In the pew Bible, it's chapter 13. And 1 through 9 is on one part, and the second half starts at 18, and it's right next to it. They're like parallel with each other, so that way you can actually see the story, how they they talk about the parable and explain the parable, and it's nicely printed in our our Bible there, so you can tell tell it side by side. So we're at chapter 13, and this is about the time where people are really starting to follow Jesus. They've caught up with him. Great crowds are coming around them. They're interested in what he's saying. They've witnessed some amazing things that he's done. And so it's not like 20 or 30 people. Crowds like this are starting to gather around. And so he's sitting down, and he realizes that he's not going to be able to see everybody or talk to them. So he gets away, and he goes into a boat, and he sits down there where he can see the great crowds that are in front of him to preach the, the word to them and to share with them a parable. And so this is a parable that he shares. And he says, a sower goes out to sow, and on the way, some of the seed falls on the path. What happens to the seed on the path? The birds come, and they eat it up. Some seed falls on the rocky ground, and it sprouts up, but it doesn't have enough soil to get good roots down, and the sun comes out, and it scorches it, and it withers away. Other seed falls among the thorns, but it chokes out the seed, and still some seed falls onto good soil, and it yields a hundredfold, sixtyfold, thirtyfold. And then he goes on to explain what this parable means. Now, many theologians don't like it whenever you explain a parable, because parables are meant to be open-ended for the listener to determine what it means to them. However, Matthew does not believe in that, and Matthew's Jesus always explains the parables. So if you don't like what's being explained, that's fine. It's totally fine. You can come up with your own explanation. But I like what Matthew does here, and I like that it's parallel even in our, um, our Bible there. So he starts to explain what this is. And he says this parable about the sower is about anybody that hears the word. This is about somebody that's listening to the word of God, the word of the kingdom. And if they don't understand it, it's almost as if their heart's closed off to it. That's the seed that's sown on the path that the birds come and just eat it right away. They don't even have a chance to receive it. They're just closed off to it. Almost as if the evil one has taken it out of their heart. And then he talks about the seed that was sown on the rocky ground. Well, that's like it shoots up for a little bit and it has a little bit of life. There's a little bit of joy there. Somebody kind of understands it. But then, all of a sudden, they turn to the calamity of the day, the tragedy of the day, the disease, the the diagnosis, the the addiction, the, the, the person, the spouse, the child, whatever it is that they're dealing with. And that takes all of their attention. It's almost as if the sun scorches that flower and it just goes away. And they're no longer participating in that word. And then there's the thorns. The thorns choke it out immediately, and it talks about that's our material possessions. That's the worldly values that we have. I consider the thorns to be my selfish self-centeredness. That's whenever I know that the word is there, but I am just so focused on the paint that's on top of my dishwasher right now, and that is everything that's wrong with this world. And all of a sudden, I'm clutching a box, my knuckles turning white, filled with righteous indignation. I'm closed off. And then there's the good soil, that it receives it, and it understands it, and it yields. The woman at Lowe's has no idea that she was sowing seed that day, and she showed me Christ, and I was able to receive it. Miraculously, I turned into good soil. Now, back then, Sowing and planting was much like it is today. You would create a field, you would go out, you would plant your seed, you would water it, it would grow, it would yield. They even left the outer skirts for the, for the stranger, for, the, uh, uh, for the, the alien in the town. You know, they, they made sure that everybody else could, could had something. So you would use grandpa's, grandparents' you know, uh, formula on how to do things. They didn't have farmer's almanacs or anything, but they would make a field. 
The story kind of makes it seem like the person's walking out there and just like throwing seed left and right. See where it lands, you know, that type of stuff, all willy-nilly. But picture, if you can, somebody with a satchel, you know, and a big bag that's just filled to the brim with seeds. And they're walking to go do what they're supposed to be doing that day. And as they walk, the seeds are just sprinkling out the sides. There's so much of it, like the Havdala cup. It's just spilling out all over, everywhere they walk. And some of it is going to land on good soil. Some of it's going to land on pavement. Some of it's going to land on rocky ground. Some of it's going to land among the thorns. And they, it can't help. It's going to just pour out. The point being is that, ladies and gentlemen, we are both the sower and the ground. Now, if you're like me, you're real good soil, right? We're all, I'm, I'm good soil. I'm not that other stuff, right? No. I'm not rocky ground. I'm not sun-scorched earth. No, no. I'm real good soil. If we remember last week, Pastor Heather said, I'm simultaneously both saint and, and sinner. That's right. I can't escape that. That's my reality. The beautiful thing is I have the ability to be good soil at any point in time. And I can be receptive to whatever seed has been sown. And sometimes it comes to me in the most outrageous moments like a woman at Lowe's. But I get it at that moment in time. And then I'm able to go and tell this person that comes into my house to sign checks and stuff, saying, well, how'd we do? And I can just say, you finished, and let it be. And then they give me a piece of paper to give them a review. And I said, I'll hold on to that. And instead of saying everything that I really want to say on that review, I'm not going to. I'm also not going to endorse because I don't want to cause them any harm. I really don't want to cause them any harm because I don't think they were out to harm me. I don't think those workers got up in the morning and saying, let's go see how we can mess up Pastor Steve's house. I don't think that's what was going on, but that's how I received it. Lord, let my heart be good soil. Let me be open to your word to see you dwelling even in this dark spot, even in this painful experience, even in this uncomfortable space, let my heart be good soil. Because the fact of the matter is, is that I'm sowing seed everywhere I go. No matter where I'm walking, it's spilling out over me. Am I sharing the seed to others? The good news of Christ to others? Am I sowing out that seed? What am I sharing? I can't be responsible for where it lands. You may be in the worst spot of your life right now and it feels like a thorny, sun-scorched earth, but I invite you to ask, let my heart be good soil so that I can be open to your word. Let it come inside of me. Let me bear good fruit so that we can yield 100-fold, 60-fold, 30-fold, because then I can help others by what you have sown in my heart. Lord, let my heart be good soil. Amen.